Tonight we are going to speak about uh, well-being and artificial intelligence and autonomous systems uh, in a gathering of uh, people from uh, parliaments, industry, uh, academia, uh, with the technology, science and uh, philosophy background. We also try to define well-being. What does it mean? Are we more competitive? Will we be richer? Will we be healthier? Will, be ha will we be happier? So these are real uh, priorities maybe that we have to define what we want to measure, not only uh, GDP but other benchmarks. The opening question is the following. Why Go, trying to go beyond GDP? Why tr looking at those measures that aim to go beyond GDP? Uh, the starting point is the following. GDP is a good and necessary measure of economic activity, but it is a very poor measure of people's well-being. I also recall the, the, one of the first aims of the EU, and I'm speaking on the basis of the Union Treaties as a lawyer, uh, which says that the Union is there to promote its values and the well-being of the people. If we are at the for forefront of it, we will be able to influence the process, we will be able to shape it according to our values and based many of which were listed uh, by, by Salab previously, so we will be able to ensure that first of all we have the maximum benefit but also that it's, it is done according to what we think are important values from our European perspective. So how, how can we really make sure that technology which is not neutral? I, I bet no technology is completely neutral and I think we have to understand that it has a political nature and we have to understand and that's why we need philosophers, we need philosophers of technology to discuss the, this with us. The most important issue is to, to look at what I'm looking forward tonight is to see how we can develop AI in a way that can be accountable, responsible and transparent such that the actions and the technology development is uh, indeed contributing and, motivate, and mo being motivated by the well-being of humankind. L'intelligence artificielle que l'on côtoie au quotidien avec euh, tous les objets connectés sera formidable pour l'avenir, notamment dans la médecine, dans, la, dans tous les gens qui souffrent d'un handicap. Et ça, c'est essentiel. Euh, donc il faut vraiment rassurer nos, nos concitoyens sur l'avenir de l'intelligence la artificielle, qui est donc une, une opportunité et non pas euh, quelque chose de, de dangereux pour l'emploi, d'agressif. Et donc il faut vraiment démystifier cette, cette crainte et rassurer nos concitoyens. I think uh, the approach that you presented earlier goes in that direction that we can't just bluntly look at the numbers and see what is the target. Target is good, therefore everything's fine. But is the transition towards that target going to be according to our values? In particular, I think in this case, uh, fairness. I think that's going to be a crucial consideration. Let's stop talking about so and so many jobs were lost, so and so many were created. Because I don't really care if so many were created, if they are bad jobs if they're precarious work, if they're paid under the living wage, then that's nothing we should celebrate. Our major uh, message to the, uh, to the public bodies in Europe is that uh, uh, we need to go further into the direction of artificial intelligence development, but only uh, following the way we want to go and not only how fast we are going there. My point is that um Technology doesn't overcome us. We can manage it, and I think that we made a great start here uh, tonight in managing it, and a lot of people have already been working on it. In a uh, traffic jam, the GDP goes up, right? Because in a traffic jam, you're using gasoline, and that's, that's fine. But no one would sort of argue that human well-being is increasing in a traffic jam. The idea is that, uh, the changes that are uh, brought forward by these uh, digital technologies could be monitored across all the various dimensions of human well-being. 
What companies are realizing, at least the ones we have been discussing too, is that uh, well-being and uh, human, the human value is what is uh, nowadays, they're realizing that that is the central motivation for their innovation. On the various recommendations and topics that uh, are raised, uh, you can ask such questions about uh, how do we address the well-being of the individual user or the stakeholders and come up with concrete solutions. That's uh, really, I think, uh, uh, a way uh, which is a kind of great ga game changer for how do you perform the development. I still work on uh, robotics and artificial intelligence. It's my new hobby. <laughs> But the reason we're so excited about this idea of advancing technology for humanity, that's really the ethics. The ethics meaning you have to have methodologies to determine what is actually, quote, best for humanity. And ethics and applied ethics, the methodologies that we use in the IEEE Global Initiative, and also with our document called Ethically Aligned Design, that is what we're trying to do. But as a philosopher, how do you know that your field really exists? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not such a problem. If, you, if my field doesn't exist, maybe you, you don't exist either. So yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. If a big organization like uh, IEEE is considering the well-being to be an important principle in the design of artificial intelligence, I am very optimistic that you have succeeded to convince others to join you.